All righty, all righty, all righty. What's happening, everybody? Come on in the room. Come on in the room. We're going to have a little fun with this one today uh, because uh, a friend of mine just contacted me earlier today. And this is what's going to make this so fun. Um, she contacted me and she was like, uh, she said, hey, she said, this company that she's going to work for, and I promise I'm taking you guys somewhere and this is going to be funny because a lot of you don't know what is happening or transitioning uh, with your when your employer does this. Or a lot of you just never even thought about it. But anyway. She says that uh, this company that she's going to work for has just sent her an invitation to go eat lunch to a birthday party or to some other employee's birthday party that she didn't even know. And she just thought that this was the world of a heck of a gesture. Now, if I've said it one time, I've said it a thousand, maybe even a hundred thousand or possibly even a million. Your boss, the person that you work for, will never pay you enough money to be his neighbor. Let me say that again, because I think y'all missed that the first time. Your boss, the person that you work for, will never pay you enough money to become his neighbor. Now, that's not to say that you can't move into his neighborhood. That's not even to say that you can't move next door to him. But I will bet you a dollar to a dime. If he knows you're, you're, you are an employee of his, his first statement, not even a question, possibly a question, but his first statement will be, I pay you too much money. Now, if it is a question, the question is, how much money am I paying you for you to move into my neighborhood next door to me? Now, think about that. You can go to work, ladies and gentlemen, every day of your life. Uh, it don't matter what you're doing, whether you're slopping hogs or picking up trash. Let's just say you're the local janitor at your job, right? And you can go to that job and you can pick up 50 bags of trash a day or 500 bags of trash a day. They're going to pay you the same amount of money to do the same thing. You're only going to make what, you, what you're supposed to make. And that's it. Now, you can give them 100%. Or you can give them a thousand percent. You're still going to make the same exact thing. Now, here's the, the distractions that employers do for uh do to employees to keep their minds distraction distracted and believe that uh, uh well not believe they keep your mind distracted in order to not pay you. Now, being fortunate and blessed enough to be around business owners that have, you know, 200 plus employees, you pick up tricks that they do. You might work for a company that has that employee of the month parking space right next to the building. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 they're not giving you any money for being the employee of the month. They want you to park next to the building. And then that one parking space is closer than the actual owners of the company. Come on now. <laughs> Y'all got to wake up and smell the coffee because this is a, a distraction to justify or to keep from paying you. You can be a, you can be a stellar employee. And all you get is a parking space close to the door. Now some people they'll believe 
oh man, I made employee of the month. And you get your little eight by 10 picture put up there on the entrance of the door. See, that's because we have become a society and a people that wear kudos from other people makes us feel like we somebody. Just being honest. Just being honest. Or you may have worked, and I, I actually worked for a company like this several years ago. They used to give us a steak dinner. Oh, man, it was catered. Right? <laughs> and, and I used to always think to myself, okay, this is about a, maybe a 12 or a $13 steak with a baked potato and some salad. That's it. You know, and, and you got to eat off a real plate and real utensils, and it was buffet style. You know, you just go down the line, and and they'll even, uh, uh, you can get your tea, and you go upstairs, and, and you got an extra 30 minutes on break that day. So instead of a 30-minute break, you got the whole hour and a steak dinner. Now, I was sitting here, and I was, I was like, Man, I haven't had a raise in two years. If they give me a raise, I can buy my own steak dinner. If they gave me the money, now when you think about it, okay, a $13 steak, you can get that at um, Applebee's, Chili's, uh, Outback, Longhorn. You get those, you know, a little six ounce sirloin. And that's about $13, $14. Now, the baked potato. Well, it always comes in a combo meal or a dinner meal. So that's all you get. So they spent the equivalent of, let me do the math right quick. Uh, so we can understand just how this game is played. Right? I want y'all to bear with me for a minute. Now, let's say you have a company of 150 people. And we're going to do this on the rough, on the low end. We're going to lowball it and say that the steak dinner was... $15. That's a nice moderate number. $15 steak. That company spent the equivalent of $22.50. $22,250 to have that meal catered. And it was a one hitter quitter. No go back. No, no, no. Uh, you couldn't go back and, and get another plate. It was a one hitter quitter. Now, Let's look at this, ladies and gentlemen. $2,250. And we're going to divide that by the same 150 employees. You know what that equate out to, ladies and gentlemen? Each person could have got $15 that day. Eh, that's not a lot of money. Really, it's not. But... Divide that by 40 hours. Divide that by 40 hours. That's a 38 cent raise for the week out of 40 hours. Because if you multiplied that, you took that same $2,200 that they spent on a steak dinner that they didn't have to, to not pay you 38 cent raise. This is why I always tell people, you are not free until you free yourself. And the only way for you to be free yourself is to now become your own boss so you can live your dreams like you deserve to. Here's another trick that companies do, ladies and gentlemen, to keep you distracted from paying you. Anybody ever got that annual watch or that 10-year watch? That little gold, fake platinum? I mean, not even platinum. That fake gold plated Timex. It's not even a, a, a bull over or an Invictus. It's not even a high quality watch. It's a Timex that they went to Wally World and spent every, they might have spent $40 on. Might. But let's just say they, they did get you an Invictus. Nice $250 watch. That's a nice brand of watches. I have one myself. But it took you 10 years for your company, <laughs> for the company you work for, 
to give you $250 watch. Like you haven't bought a watch in 10 years already. Like you couldn't have went and spent your own $250 on a watch, an Evictor's watch, yourself. Distraction. See, here in this society that we live in, and it starts at kindergarten, all through our secondary educational lives, it starts there. This is the programming that uh, uh, um, the powers, I'm going to say the powers that be because that kind of sounds like a little uh, clandestine, which it probably is. Let me just say wealthy people because wealthy people have come up and they have enough money to pay for the science on how to control the lower classes of people. See, in a class society, ladies and gentlemen, you need a class society. Wealthy people need a class society in order for them to remain wealthy. And they come up with these dupes and these tricks to keep you loyal and faithful to keep making them money. Now, how does how do we know that to be true? Why are we as grown people getting a perfect attendance record at the job? Anybody ever thought about that? When was the last time you got a perfect attendance? You were in school. For showing up to school every day. <laughs> For showing up to school, you got a perfect attendance. Now, here it is. You're, you are in your adult life, and you're getting a perfect attendance for showing up to work. Good job, Billy. Billy has had a whole entire life of perfect attendance. Great. But Billy now is getting high off of the awards and the achievements and the pats on the back. I just posted something uh, a couple of days ago with Deion Sanders. You know, everybody knows who prime time is. And Dion says, that's what, what we, wealthy, uh, well, I'm a, people who are in a position of power, they want to keep you drunk on things like awards and achievements. That employee parking space closest to the building. Oh my God, I'm parking closer than the owners of the company. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> They're going to walk an extra four feet than you. That's no big deal. And they do that to keep you drunk on continuously to make them more money. Now, they're making more money, but they're not breaking you off any more money. They only gave you a parking space. They only gave you a watch. They may have given you an anniversary coat. Oh, my God, like you haven't bought a coat in five and ten years. Pay me my money. See, this is what we, 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 uh, uh, um, it's like that even when we were in school. The kid that sat quiet in the corner, he got the same information that we did. Huh? He got the same information. Some of them were passed along the same as we did, and we worked hard. Look at this. One plus one is two all over the world. Basic mathematics. Where do you use calculus, trigonometry, algebra in your regular life? Not talking about a job. Okay, yeah, if you're an architect, yes, you're going to be learning angles and all of this kind of stuff. And if you are a rocket science, you're going to be knowing about the X and the Y and the blah, blah, blah. I mean, cool, I get that part. But when you're in the grocery store at Publix, you're not trying to find out how many beans is in this can at 16 ounces for it to justify me spending a dollar and 99 cent on. Nobody in the world does. The only thing that you're calculating, ladies and gentlemen, is how much money you got to pay. And if you have enough money to pay it. Again, you are not free until you free yourself 
The first thing that we have to free ourselves from is this right here. The way that we've been programmed to our thinking in a society. Now, the ones who go against that programming, yes, a lot of times you will be ostracized, talked about, classified as a hater, an instigator, and most jobs will get rid of that person. But just look at what we see in our lifestyles now, in our lifetime now. The top three richest men in the world dropped out of college. What does that say? Is that to say that you don't need college? Eh, it could. I mean, they didn't. They could have been so far, so, so far beyond the uh, regular. No, I can't even say that either. Because Bill Gates just found a better mousetrap. And then the same people that he was coming up with in school, the Steve Jobs and the whole entire clique, they wanted to build a better computer. Here's Bill Gates. None education. <laughs> you don't need education to think this way. Why would I want to spend all of that time and energy building a computer when I can create the software that runs every computer? Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to say bye-bye to Harvard. Think about that. Think about that. See, sometimes all you need is to think outside of the box or don't even think outside the box. Think bigger. Why build a computer? This was Steve Jobs' mission with Apple. Steve Jobs' mission was to build computers. This is why every time that you go and uh, you look for software for a Mac computer, you see that small little section, that small little section for Mac products, Apple products, that small section, and they are super expensive. They even have their own Apple store that you have to buy apps from the Apple store. You can't get <laughs> a, a regular general app from anybody else, the Play Store. Think about it. St uh, 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 Bill Gates was so far down the road. Now, Bill Gates, his billionaire status, he hit the Billy Club before Steve did. Now, Steve hit it. He did. But we're talking about staying in the frame of a mind of an employee being distracted by the glitz and the glamour. No employer wants you to start thinking like a boss. Not one. He wants you to keep his money flowing and coming in. That's it. He wants you to get up out your bed at six o'clock in the morning. You can't even put your own children on the bus to go to school. Think about that. You can't go to Little Ray Ray's baseball game or your grandchildren's baseball game because it's mandatory Saturday because the 4th of July was just yesterday. So you got to work Saturday to make up for Monday, but he's at the family picnic in the, <laughs> the cookout while you at work. Yes, United States is the greatest country on the face of the planet Earth. That's true. If you're in the top 1%. And some of us have thought, yes, we are a little bit better as far as condition, physical condition, not mental, but physical condition than our parents and our grandparents because we have acquired a little bit more. But is it really? Is it really? Because we're still in a society that some people, the majority, the 85%, are still living from check to check. 
You can't save any money. Oh my God, have y'all looked at gas prices? Have you looked at the gallon of milk? McDonald's, I remember when I was a little kid, McDonald's had that all-American meal for $1.99. Ooh. <laughs> now, you can't even get the number. The number one combo is $8. Eight bucks. I remember when you used to get cheese for free. Now it went from 10 cent, 15 cent, 25 cent, 35 cent, 50 cent. Now tell them people to put a slice of cheese on your hamburger and watch they charge you a dollar. Same cheese. <coughs> but nobody else that's putting, making that hamburger got any more money for doing it. So when I tell you about the distractions that employers use, ladies and gentlemen, come up with you a plan. It doesn't make a difference how long it takes you to get to your goal. Put that outside of your mind. Because again, those are also distractions. You don't want this type of life. More money, more problems. But not a single one of them have gave up or given away any of their money. Why is that? Not a single one of them has sold those million dollar houses and bought, went back and bought a moderate $500,000 house, $250,000 house. I mean, <laughs> think about that. None of them have given up the Bentleys and the Mercedes and went back and just bought a moderate, a jet, not even a Cadillac. Only one. And I got to respect Warren Buffett for that. Warren Buffett has the same 2004 CTS Cadillac. No chauffeur. He still drives himself. I got to respect a man like that. He's not trying to keep up with the Joneses and try to show off his wealth and, and, and all this other kind of stuff. I got to respect that about Warren Buffett. The man is still living in a house. Standard. He's in the same, the Holloway house or Holloway, uh, uh, the company that he owns, is still in the same building that he had when he first started out. He has the same staff when he first started out. He's a billionaire. Everybody that's working for him is a millionaire. Now, that's a boss. <laughs> he brought everybody up with him that was down with him the first time. That's an employer that wants to see you do better. Because you can't hang around. It's the same. When you hang around millionaires, if you if you hang around two millionaires, you'll be the third one. That's just the same. Because one, you're going to be listening and picking up. And then for you to be around that type of people, they want to see you do better. If they want to see you do better. But even if they don't want to see you do better, do like me, E.F. Hutton. What they talking about? Oh, um, yeah. Okay. I don't understand that. So let me bring out my handy dandy cell phone and boom, 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 boom. I'm going to Google what they talking about. If I don't know what they talking about, I got a computer in my pocket. I'm going to find out what they talking about. And then I'm going to be like, oh, light bulb. I may not have tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest, but you know what? I got a couple hundred, maybe a thousand. I won't get my hair one way or the other. But you can't do it if you are still locked into an employee state of mind and distracted by that little one week of vacation. You can't even take the full two weeks vacation at your job. Tell me I'm lying. Because we are already limited on in staff. And oh, well, somebody already asked this week before you. 
wait a minute, I done gave y'all a whole year of faithful service. I done sold my time. I done trained. I done sold my time for this little piece of change that you paying me. And somebody else came in and said that I can't go on my vacation. What? But we say we free. Mm. Tell your employer, hey, listen, um, my daughter's getting married. Uh, let's just pick a place in, 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 in Miami. And I want to be there. Ah. <laughs> See if you can get somebody to cover your shift first. You know, and they know. Let's go back to what I was saying earlier, because they want you to get up out of your bed at six o'clock in the morning and be at work on time. And then they come in Watson on banker's hours. For real? For real. And then I get points. Or you get points because <laughs> you get points for being late. You get penalized for being late because you had to make sure that your children was had everything that they need. You had to make sure that your children had their school clothes ready and their lunches ready. You had to make sure that the husband or the wife was squared away. The average person, if you got to be at work at 6, you up at 4.30. Huh. You up before the sun even comes up. But I can guarantee you, they are enjoying their bed while you had to go to Badcock and buy your bed because he's only paying you this much, but he's making this much. <laughs> Distractions, ladies and gentlemen. So, again, here we go with how we can overcome those distractions. First of all, come up with you a plan. Ask yourself, write this down. Ask yourself this. If time and money wasn't an issue, what would I really be doing? If you had the time and you had the money, what would you be doing? I can guarantee you it wouldn't be going to work. Not for somebody else. So write that down and ask yourself that question. What would I be doing if time and money wasn't an issue? Two, how can I make that a reality? Huh? How can you take that dream and make it a reality? See, for us to live in a country, in a society, to where they ask uh, you can be anything that you want to be. So why aren't we what we want to be? All through school, ladies and gentlemen, the first question that they ask you when you go to kindergarten, what do you want to be, little Billy, when you grow up? I want to be a police officer. Job. That's great. I want to be a musician. That's great. Job. I want to be a nurse. Great, Sarah. Job. I want to be a doctor. Good way, Karen. Job. I want to be a lawyer. Job. I can guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, you can go to any school right now. Well, not right now because they're out of school. Show up on the first day of school. Go into the kindergarten class or the pre-K class. This is what happens in a class society. Children only know what they see their parents do. That's why every time those children are asked that question, they always give a job. But nowhere in our educational system do they teach you how to create a business and create jobs. Nowhere. Now, some people will argue that and say, well, you got to go out to college and then you got to go to business school and, and learn how to run a business. Okay, 
I posted something a couple of days ago where Steve Harvey had talked about a friend of his back in Ohio that was called Clippers. And Clippers used to cut grass when they was little boys. Now, they wanted to go off and go play, but Clippers, he had yards to cut. Clippers, 62 years old now. If you guys go back through my news feed, you can see that post. And the man is $4 million. Has all of the municipal contracts <laughs> to cut all of because he Clippers thought bigger that I'm just cutting grass. Huh? There was another post that I posted up a while back. I know barbers that are skillfully, they are masters, barbers. And they make good money. At $25 a head, cutting four heads in an hour, that's $100 an hour, and you work on an average day of eight to 10 hours. You're making some good money as a barber. But here's where their money level is now. Mm, plateaued off. Why is that? They're still thinking as employees and caught up into the grind. Now, if you go back and look at that live stream or that podcast that I did that day, I gave every barber, stylist, and nail tech a million-dollar plan for free. <laughs> a million-dollar plan for free. And I use the state of Alabama as an example because it's $150, $150 to start your own barber college. I was actually talking to another friend of mine about that in Jacksonville. And I said, brother, he's opened up another shop. He's closed shops. He's opened up another shop. So he's caught up into the, the hustle and the bustle. And what happened was I told him, I said, hey, bro. I said, Paul, why don't you start your own barbering college? Man, that take too long. What? Man, I know people who said you got to have at least a million dollars to do that. I said, no, you don't. See, that's one thing that we do, too, as a people. We listen to other people who don't have nothing nowhere close to the lifestyle that we want to live. And we will listen to them other than to go back and research it for their ourselves. I tell everyone most of the time, if I remember, even when I do these lives, don't take my word for nothing. Go back and research it for yourself. Before you hate and say, I'm telling you a story, I'm making up some stuff, go back and research it for yourselves. That's what keeps my audience coming back. I have no reason to lie to you, ladies and gentlemen. Not one. So when I tell you, you can LLC your business for $50, the same process that your employer went through, you can register your business for $50. Pass up Applebee's and Outback and Longhorn and Texas Roadhouse for one month or for just one meal. Pass that up once to come up with your company name and start you an LLC. While you building up your plan, you can go ahead and create that business. Now, this is what we call a shelf corporation. Ooh, see everything that I have been talking about for the past two months. It's all coming to a point. This is not by accident, ladies and gentlemen. This is designed. This is a purpose because I'm telling you that you too can do the same thing that your bosses can do or have been doing and reap the same results. I'm not telling you a story when I tell you that you can create your own business, sell everything that you own to your company. Now your company's assets and net worth has increased tremendously because now it's an asset. Who cares if it's a depreciation value? Your car can be making you money as opposed to you losing money. Huh. I'm just telling you what God loves, and he don't love nothing but the truth. Your house is losing you money. Now, they tell you, yes, you're building up equity into it and blah, 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 blah. I get it. But when your business owns it, 
It's a different ball game. It's a different feeling. You ever notice why sometimes you're, you're the, uh, if you do get invited to lunch by the bank or, or get invited to lunch by your employer, even your supervisor, they are with, they want to pay. It's not that they are saying you don't have any money. It's a tax write-off for them. They just wrote off the whole entire meal as a business expense. That's why they always use a company card. Ladies and gentlemen, I have one card in my name, and that's just to satisfy the government because the banks are reported, they are obligated to report anything over $5,001 to the IRS and the federal government. They obligate it because of FDIC. But every other, all of my other cards, all the rest of my cards are company cards. And I live off of those. Because everything that it is, is a write-off. I keep my bank account moderate to keep people out of my business, especially the government. But it's the same exact thing that the, your, your employers do. They write off everything. Now, how be it is when you, as a person who's filing income taxes, you can only claim boots <laughs> for your job as a write-off. Boots. What about all the other clothes you got to buy? What if you're a welder? And God knows welders, y'all go through clothes like, woo. But the only thing that you can write off is your boots. All those jeans. But if you had a company, huh? And see, we haven't even got to the part yet to where I'm going to teach you guys, even if you do have a company and then if you're still going to work for somebody else, you can go in and list yourself as a contractor, a private contractor, which puts you in another realm of the employee bracket. Ooh, y'all didn't know about that, did you? Because then at that point, ladies and gentlemen, you filing a 1099 Schedule C. You're not filing just a regular 1099 as an employer. Because now what that does, what that tells your employer or the person that is hiring you as a subcontractor or a subcontracted worker, I'm going to pay my own insurance. I'm going to pay my own uh, 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 workman's comp. I'm going to take care and pay for all that. So instead of you going in and applying for a job for $13.50 an hour, I need y'all to pay me $33.50 an hour. Y'all didn't know y'all can do that. Y'all didn't know you can do that. Ooh, family. The book called Bible says we suffer because of lack of knowledge. But when that knowledge comes to you, don't run from it because you haven't heard it before. Or nobody in your circles have know about what, the, what you just talked about. I get it all the time, ladies and gentlemen. I get it. I get it. I hear it myself. You can't do that. How do you know if you've never done it? Man, you're doing something going to get you locked up. It's written in the laws. How can you get locked up? <laughs> class society. You keep the dumb dumb or you keep the poor poor. I don't want to say dumb. Keep the poor poor and keep the rich rich. <coughs> Excuse me. But what separates the rich from the poor is knowledge. It's what you know. Ladies and gentlemen, I've heard it uh, even before I started being pretty comfortable. I've heard it a lot. You can um, the show was Millionaire Boss or Undercover Boss. That was the show. And he was like, man, you can take everything I own and drop me off in the middle of nowhere. I'm going to come right back up in a week or two weeks. How can somebody utter such a statement? It's not about what you have. It's what you know. And what you know is who to go to to get what you don't have. 
That is true, ladies and gentlemen. I never worry about being broke ever again. Why is that? Because of what I know now. I know how to make moves. And I know how to get it without having to get it illegally. Mm. Mm. When I learned the game, when I learned the Craigslist game, I will never, ever go broke again. And I gave, I gave that same game. Because why? Because I went through it and I did it myself in order to self-fund and get me to where I am now. Some people think it's, too, it's embarrassing to pick up cans. What? That's free money. Some people think that it's embarrassing to pick up furniture uh, on the side of the road or some go to some of these apartment complexes, these high, especially here. It's some high dollar apartment complexes and these bougie people think that, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to throw it away. But guess what? That's free money for me. Even to this day, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you guys would ask my partner. He was like, man, if you bring one more thing over here. And I'm like, dude, look, I found this this um, this baby changing station, uh, beautiful piece, dark wood. Uh, uh, when I Googled it, when I Googled the name, it took me over to eBay. Here's, I mean, not eBay, uh, Amazon. Here's the game. And this is why I keep telling everybody, you know, I'll never go broke again. When I Google search that the the name of that that uh, it's a bassinet slash changing table because it came, because it came with a big oblong bowl the same shape as the changing table and, and uh, again when I Google said that that name it came back the thing was like almost fifteen hundred dollars to buy it brand new what last time I checked the baby making business is still in full swing. Nobody stopped making babies. Polished it up, cleaned it up, boom, 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 boom. Swapped out the uh, uh, the little changing pad, put a little cover on it, took some pictures of it, posted it on eBay. Posted it on Marketplace. That's all you got to do, ladies and gentlemen. But come up with you a plan on how to make your dream come to reality. And once you do that, then you will start seeing everything fall in place. Because now, now you have a track record. That's all you need to establish your belief system is a history and a track record that you can have it. That's all you have to do. Once you start establishing that, okay, look, I set the goal to be six months. I'm already here. Now I set the goal to be a year and a half. I need to be here. And then when that goal comes to, it's a realistic goal. This is why even the government gives you two to five years to establish a small business. It's no pressure. It's baby steps. But you need those baby steps to build your confidence that, hey, I can walk amongst the giants. Okay, how many times the baby fall? They be laughing and giggling, and then they get right back up, and then they waddle a little bit some more, and then but see you just keep encouraging. Now as adults, you just gotta pat yourself. You can do it, boy. You done went through all of this all your life. You can I, you can do it, girl. Hey. Look, I thank you guys for chilling with me this time. I went a little bit overboard, but I just wanted you guys to be aware of the distractions that employers do to keep you muzzled <laughs> and not paying attention, not paying attention to what's actually happening. Don't be distracted by them little gifts and gift cards. All them years you don't work for them, all they can do is come up with you with a $25 gift, a $25 gift card. I would be insulted. I should have been insulted, but I never thought about it because I was always thinking as an employee. <laughs> all you gonna do is give me a parking space. 
All you gonna do is give me a watch after 10 years? I haven't owned a watch. And then it's a course. Really? A Timex. Y'all couldn't even spend money on a good, decent watch. You could at least got me a Citizens. Good grief. A Quartz? <laughs> hey, family. Hey, I am R.D. Muhammad right here at Plugged In. Uh, uh, man, he's giving you the information that you need in order to help you be successful. You guys needed to hear this today. Because it's going to help you. It's going to make you look at things in a whole different light. But I'm giving you the information that you need in order to help you be successful so you can live, you can fire your boss. Always remember that hashtag, ladies and gentlemen. Fire your boss. Hashtag. Uh, <laughs> so you can, live your, you can live the life of your dreams. You can live your dreams. But you will never be able to live your dreams as long as you are under the thumb of somebody else that's telling you when to wake up, how long you need to stay at their job, and when you can take off. Some cases, you still, some of us as grown people, we got to ask, can we go to the bathroom? Mm. Think about that. Hey, I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace.